We've had a baby. <laughs> um, Karen, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, we filmed both of our little chats about Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies together, and then we went away and we read The Mirror and the Light. Uh, we were very lucky we got to read it a little bit ahead of publication so that we could be ready for you here to give you our first non-spoilery -spoil review. I've spoiled saying spoiler. <laughs> um, please go first, Kieran. What would you like to say about this book? I feel like a different person now. I feel enlightened. Okay. I feel like I've cried all my tears and just in a very zen state. I feel complete. Is that enough? <laughs> End of video. <laughs> uh, it's quite a thing, isn't it? So people have been waiting for this concluding part. You know, when you know when you know it's a trilogy, you obviously you're waiting for the concluding part. It's been eight years. Yeah. Uh, lots of anticipation, and I suppose a bit of worry for some people. Like, is it going to live up to my expectations? And I suppose the first thing to say is that for me, who, who read one book after the other, it which is a great way to do it, by the way, because you are just completely in the world. And I felt, because Bring Out the Bodies picks up literally where Wolf Hall ends and this book does the same thing, you just have that thing of just, yeah. You, momentum. You, yeah, just absolutely momentum. And this, let's not pretend, is not a small book. It's a big book. It's the biggest of the trilogy, um, as often happens with trilogies. <laughs> um, but it's because there's so much to cover. It's a rich book, isn't it? There's lots in there. But I think what you're keyed in to, as a reader, having read the first two books, and it means that she's able to cover so much ground and give you so much because she's circling round and round. She's giving you sort of new meaning to things that you remember from the first book, which is an insane achievement, isn't it? I love how it recasts so much of what she'd already done. Mm. And you just got that deeper insight and you feel like as Cromwell gets older, he knows himself more. And, and you feel like you're growing in that discovery with him, that you're going back and you're recasting that event. And, and you're just getting all these different insights. And I just, it felt as close as, as you could be to being in someone else's head. Yeah. Like it really feels like you're just in his head and she totally trusts you as a reader. So she just, you know, I love her device of using he, and you know that he is always Cromwell, it's like I but somehow less intrusive, yeah. having it be he. And, oh, it's just masterful. I'm just so excited for people to read it so I can just sort of, we can stare at each other agape because it's, it's so good. What a joy, yeah. like, to read something so good. I think there's well, that, that thing where you want it to satisfy, uh, as, a, as a reading experience, you want it to satisfy in terms of the story and the fact that she's been able to do that, but also to surprise you as well. So we all know how the story ends. Okay, so there's no spoilers in knowing that Thomas Cromwell comes to a sticky end. But how she manages to still make that a surprise, I don't know. It happens very suddenly. And even though the book has been filled with peril, it feels like the stakes are much higher in this book than they ever have been for Thomas in the past. And that his, the machinations are so complicated and constantly looking over your shoulder and wondering who to trust, how to maintain advantage and all that sort of stuff. And so, yeah, all the time you're thinking, when's it going to happen? Because <laughs> we know it's going to happen, but she still surprises you, which I think is incredibly clever. Yeah, the politics of it, like you're talking, like the, the machinations, and you actually do feel like you're looking over your shoulder and you're like, will it be now? You're waiting for the axe to fall. Yeah. And God, the tenderness, the tenderness in it that she managed to elicit for this man who, who is quite a brutal He's a brutal man and he accepts that about himself mm. and and just it's so raw this book it's so masterful and well crafted but it's also so raw the emotion in it and you know you get that from the very first book from wolf hall with his family you just feel the emotion come off the page and this is just a whole other level <laughs> the the final few pages i was just openly weeping just, i mean openly <laughs> <laughs> in public. <laughs> no, not in public, not allowed to read it in public. Oh, and of course you were. Yeah, that would have been a bit of a giveaway. That was yeah, good. you were very well behaved. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and uh, this thing about sort of uh, layers of meaning. And what I mean by that is that what the first two books are, of course, incredibly detailed, um, as good historical fiction should be. But what she somehow manages to do is to 
it's not that she gives you more detail, but she just makes the picture more complete with the third book so that you have these kind of, they're not really flashbacks, but it's that thing where you get nuances about things that have happened in the past, all to flesh out the character, all to make more sense of the human drama of what's going on, and all with this skill as a writer to provide you with the right image or the right metaphor or the right phrase. or the right, And the skill on display is insane. And it means that actually it renders so many other books a bit, not pointless, but you just kind of go, you're going to have to up your game if you want to, you know, compete at this level. That's how I felt as a writer as well. I'm a, I'm a reader first and foremost, but as a writer, I was like, God, I have so much to learn. And that's so exciting yeah. that there are people like her pushing what a novel can do, pushing the mastery over a form to such an extent. And in such a big novel, and you're completely right about just she's just fleshing it out. It's like a tapestry where mm. you see all the big picture, but then she just zooms in and picks out all these little glinting threads. And it all stitches together so perfectly. And I really, I have to read it again because the first time I read it, I was just heart in my mouth, like, I can't believe I'm reading this. I can't believe it's so perfect. I can't. And I can't wait to read it as a writer and, and really enjoy yeah. that skill. Because who else does this? Well, and, and that thing as well about, so I remember Sarah Perry once said that she read um, Amy Sackville's book, Painter of the King, and it made her go, need to up your game, because that's what you can do with the book. And I think that for readers, it will be a joy. Um, even for, for, for newbies like me who hadn't read any of the books up until a few months ago, um, it's a, it will encourage you to start at the beginning and it definitely rewards the reading experience. Um, but also for any writer out there, I think if you're, a, if you're serious about your writing and you write anything in this kind of wheelhouse of historical fiction, you have to read these books because it does show you what the form can do uh, and, and how you can, as you say, how you can push it into new areas. So, I mean, it's not so much a review as a kind of squeal of Just joy. I can't <laughs> handle how good it is. I'm so excited for I really think this is going to be a book that everyone reads. And I just can't wait to, for those conversations to continue because this is a book that's going to grow and grow and grow. Mm. There's so much to unpick. It's just going to grow with the reading of it. You know, this is not all hype and there's already been so much noise around this book. But once you read it, it's just... I'm just so excited. I'm so excited for you to read it. So we hope you enjoy it. Um, we think that that Hilary Mantel might go someplace. Oh, she might do well. She might do well. Um, but this is uh, the book to look out for, uh, The Mirror and the Light. This is what it looks like, a lovely finished copy. Um, we hope you've enjoyed our little vlogs. Uh, there are, of course, uh, more, more squeals of joy in our uh, Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies videos, which will be linked to here. Um, and of course, uh, my interview with Hilary Mantel is also here on YouTube or, or whichever platform you're watching this on. So we'll provide a link for that too. She's completely fascinating throughout. Uh, she speaks to me for about half an hour about all three books and uh, speaks in perfectly formed sentences and paragraphs um, with fascinating insight. So do please watch. It's, it's great. brilliant. Um, Kieran, I don't know how we're going to meet up again uh, to squeal about books in the future, but I'm sure we will find a way yes. <laughs> until we find another big chunky trilogy to talk exactly. about together. Uh, but until then, bye, bye and goodbye to all of you.